Okay, in this problem, unlike the previous problem where we were uh, required to find probabilities of x within certain range, so we answered three questions. While one was what the probability of that x is greater than certain value, then x less than certain value, and x between two values. Here we are given that, or we want to find how long do the longest 10% of calls last. What does it mean? Okay, let's see that on the curve, what, what that question is about. Okay, so on the curve, you see the question how long, so we mean, which means that we are asking for x, we don't know x, but what we know, we know that 10%. And you know 10% is what? The area. So this is that area. It's equal to 0.1 or 10%. So this is similar to the uniform distribution problem where we were given, again, we wanted to find that uh, quiz time, that's the top 10% time. What, what would be that time? But the uniform distribution it was easy because that 10% was an area, and the area of under the PDF representing uniform distribution is simple. Here we cannot do the same. Okay, but it's not going to be also complicated here. Again, we're going to use the Z table. Everything is in the Z table. So let's see what we can write in priority statements. Here, what we what we want to do. Let me just uh, erase that. It's blocking you. Okay, so we want to find x such that p of x greater than x is 0 0.1. All right. Now, we know that, the, as we established before, the probability that x greater than certain x is 1 minus p of x less or equal than x. Okay. So, which means that the probability of x less or equal than x is 0 0.9. Right, you can see that on the curve. If this is 0 0.1, that means what's left for all that is 0 0.9. And again, you know why I'm doing that, why I'm interested into that area. Because this is what we call the cumulative area coming from the lower tail until a certain uh, boundary like here x. So I know that the area is 0 0.9. 90%. Okay, so what do I know about that? I will standardize again. So as p of x less or equal than x is 0 0.9, I will standardize this. Okay, but now I cannot, this is not a value yet for me because x is unknown, right? x is unknown. But I know that this one, this part is z. So I know that p of z less or equal than a certain value that include an x, I don't know that value yet, what is it, is equal to 0 0.9. So unlike the previous problem, when we w wanted to find that, now this is given to us. So guess what we're going to do now in the z table? Yes, we're going to look inside. We have this area. And now we're going to find the, the corresponding value in Z, right? So in the Z table, okay, we will find that the priority of Z less than 1.28 is 0 0.9, okay? So what does that mean for us? That means that, look, look at these two, this one and this one. 0 0.9 is the answer. We have z here and we have z there. Now we have here a term and here we have a term. So obviously these two terms are the same. So we can write that x minus 6.3 over 2.2 is 0 0.9. And now we can solve for x. It's the only unknown. And we find x to be equal to 9.2 minutes. All right. So I hope this is... Uh, understood for you uh, we encounter often such type of problems and now i hope that you are ready to answer such questions 
All right, this is problem 8.75 from our Keller textbook. The production time of a complex chemical needed for anti-cancer drugs is exponentially distributed with lambda of 6 kilograms per hour. What's the priority that the production process requires more than 15 minutes? Okay, so what do we have here? What's X? X is the production time in minutes, right? You define whether you want it to be in minutes or in hours or whatever. Now, because the question here was in minutes, so I wanted X to be in minutes. Okay, what do we know about that distribution? It's an exponential distribution and we are given the parameter. Remember the exponential has only one parameter, which is lambda, okay? Which is one over mu, remember this. It's given to us as 6 kilograms per hour. It's a rate, right? When x or in an exponential distribution is in time, the, the lambda, because it's 1 over mu, it's the rate. Okay. Now the question is, find the probability that x is greater or equal than 15. That's easy because we are given three, a set of probability statements when the variable is exponentially distributed. Okay, so for that one, we can use one of the three, which tells us that probability that x greater or equal than is an x is e minus lambda x. So what do we see here? We have a product of lambda times x. Now, I defined x to be in minutes, but lambda is given in kilogram per hour. So these two time units do not match. What I have to do, because I have this product, I need to convert either time uh, to match the other one. I, I, I uh, choose to convert the lambda time. So lambda is given as six kilograms per hour, which means it's six, to, six kilogram per 60 minutes, right? All what I did here, I substituted one hour with its equivalence in minute, which is 60 minutes. So now I have six over 60, it's giving me 0 0.1, now kilogram per minute. Now this time unit matches my X time unit. All what I have to do now is to plug the value of lambda, which is this one, 0 0.1, and X, which is 15, in my probability. And here we go. So we get 0.223. Okay, that was quite simple. We don't have many uh, complexities when the variable is exponentially distributed. Finally, this will be our last problem here. And in fact, this problem is only a practice on how to read the T table, which we could not spend enough time on it. Okay, but it's very essential that you know how to read the t-table, especially when it comes, uh, when we move on to the next topics of estimation and hypothesis testing, where in some cases we need to refer to the t-table instead of the z-table. But don't worry, it's going to be a very easy procedure. So here we want to use the t-table to find the followings. Okay, so I'm going to leave these. Uh, now shown to us and I'm going to shift from one to another while checking different part of the t-table. So let's start with part A. We want to find t 0 0.10 and 15. Remember what does it mean? Uh, usually we always do that. The first part, so this is t. This will be the area A, remember, on the right hand side of that t and the comma and then we have new new is the degrees of freedom okay so the first one we are looking for t such that the area on the right hand side uh, of that t is equal to to 0 0.1 or 10 percent and the degrees of freedom is 15. so let's uh, look at an extract from the t-table and you remember in the t-table the first row correspond to the area under, uh, sorry, on the right hand side of the t value that we're looking for. So we have a legend like this. Okay, and the area that you read is this one. Okay, this is area. And this is the t value. 
that we read inside the uh, inside the table so all these values that we see inside the table this this is these are t values and the first column represent the degrees of freedom so now in our case we have a degrees of freedom of 15 so here we go right it's 15 it's shown here and i'm looking for an area of 0 0.1 so here we go and the corresponding value is this so it's 1.341 all right um sorry uh let me take it out i read uh, the wrong row that was the row corresponding to degrees of freedom of 14 but we are looking for degrees of freedom of 15 okay so here we go 1.341 all right second one we want t 0 0.1 and degrees of freedom 23 i don't have it here in this part of the t so let me take this out bring another one where i have t of 23 this is t 23 and we're looking in the same column because also 0 0.1 and so we go down and here we go 1.319 okay now we want the part c t 0 0.025 and 83 obviously i cannot read 83 here so i will get rid of this part i'll bring another part but let me clean it up a little bit to avoid any confusion all right here we go we don't need these anymore all right so t0.025 t0.025 which is this and we need a degrees of freedom of 83 now in this concise uh, version of the t table i don't have all the degrees of freedom especially after uh, 30 so we decided that in this case we will compromise and we look at uh, the uh, closest degrees of freedom which in our case it's 80 and here we go this will be the t value that is closest to what we are looking for so 1.99 now for d t 0.05 and 195 so t 0.05 uh, 0 0.05 is here now 195 the closest of these will be 100 closer to 195 than 1000 so this will be my t value okay so uh, you're going to need only that uh, much uh, when it comes to the to reading the t table i hope that these problems we are clear enough for you i hope that they will help you reinforce even better uh, what you have learned from our lessons videos all right if you need any any question you know how to reach me